Okay, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our talk. My name is DJ, and I'm accompanied by my esteemed colleague, Eck Rem, today. We're both uh, employees at OB Switzerland since a more or less considerable time. And we work in uh, the Experience Success team. And for the last year, we have been doing uh, a lot of Franklin projects or edge delivery projects where we've learned a lot about performance per se, and we have learned a lot about what that means in the context of MarTech. And that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today. Um, so we're going to be talking about the need for speed or how performance is absolutely crucial for user experience, engagement, and as a consequence, conversion, which is what, what businesses want as they're building experiences. And as they're building these experiences, of course, um, businesses want insight. They want to know what's going on with uh, their investment, how, users, uh, how successful their experiences are, um, and how um, competitive they are in the market. Unfortunately, this creates a little bit of a conflict and is a little bit at odds with um, a baseline performance of websites. And we're going to discuss this today. Don't worry, maybe worry a little bit uh, because that gets you going. Um, we're going to show some mitigation strategies and Ekram is also going to present some of them live. So why does performance matter? Can I have a show of hands? Who likes slow websites? Yay! <laughs> We're going to have a serious talk afterwards. <laughs> so, uh, performance is absolutely crucial to user experience. We instinctively all know this, right? Nobody likes to wait. Uh, we all want to have this juicy piece of content uh, uh, presented to us in no time. We want to start interacting with this piece of content uh, right away, and we want to be able to continue uh, engage with that content. And this uh, increases the chance of conversion considerably. Um, in fact, studies show that um, um, studies show that um, the maximum time people are willing to wait is about two seconds, um, after which the bounce rate um, increases considerably. So that's something that we want to prevent uh, in terms of performance optimization. All of this has been extensively studied. Um, already in 2006, Amazon did a well-known study where through A-B testing, they incrementally added 100 milliseconds uh, to, to, to the page rendering time, and they noticed that they will, uh, would be losing 1% of sales for every 100 milliseconds that they add. Similarly, Walmart um, did a study where they noticed that for every one second reduction in response time, they could generate an additional 2% of conversions. So just to put that into picture, if you have a web shop that you know, does 10 million a year, that's a whopping $200,000 uh, more every year. That's a good salary of many of us here, right? So um, additionally, Google, um, one of the predominant uh, performance uh, uh, companies here, uh, uh, noticed that for a 0.4 second increase in the rendering time of search results, uh, the traffic would drop by uh, a whopping 20%, which means less ad clicks. So um, it's no surprise that Google promoted the performance score of websites um, as one of the major search engine signals, as, we, as we've already heard this week a couple of times. So uh, remember, milliseconds make millions. So what do we mean when we talk about performance? It's important to realize that um, the user experience that we all have is defined as perceived performance, right? So a lot might be going on in the background, but as long as um, the website we were accessing is loading snappy, it's loading fast, and the main piece of content is right there, we're, we're going to be happy. Similarly, um, uh, if we can start interacting with that juicy piece of main content right away, we're also going to be happy. And also, don't forget, we want to be able to not only initially quickly interact with that piece, we want to um, have a snappy and fast continued interaction as we explore the content. Of, of the site. And last but not least, uh, while we're doing all of this, we want to have visual stability. We, we hate it if, if suddenly uh, elements on the content page get rearranged unexpectedly, or if we suddenly are disturbed by overlays, modals, pop-up boxes, ads, stuff like that. So, so this is the perceived performance, and we can measure all of this. Okay? So 
You've, you've seen it in many talks already this week, but we measure kind of in two categories. Uh, first, while we are building all of those experiences, we measure performance in the lab. We create an artificial set of constraints that are quite tough. We say, for example, we, we simulate slow network connections, we simulate slower devices, weaker devices, mobile phones, tablets, stuff like that, in order to ensure the best performance possible as we release what we build. Um, Google being dominant here, uh, industry standard, um, as you've heard before, um, page speed inside service, you can use that. And what it does, it runs a Lighthouse score audit. Um, you can also run Lighthouse score audit from the dev tools in the Chrome browser as us as developers, very valuable. Um, specifically because every, every Lighthouse score that you run um, will give you a detailed performance trace that is associated one-to-one -one with the Lighthouse score run. As such, it's easy for you to, to correlate the metrics uh, that you're given in the score um, to the performance trace where you see where uh, performance was lost and why. Now, lab data is not the complete picture because it's an artificial set of constraints that we use. So therefore, um, we also need to measure performance in the field as it is experienced by actual users on their actual devices um, out in the wild, so to speak. Again, Google, very dominant here, industry standard core web vitals that are automatically collected by uh, Chrome users or by, by users of the Chrome browser. Um, and report it to Google, and you can call up um, those Core Web Vitals uh, as part of the PageSpeed Insight service um, and the Chrome User ex uh, Experience <coughs> Report. So the problem with this is a little bit that it only covers um, users of the Chrome browser, right? So excluding all, all these other browsers, Firefox, Safari, Edge, Internet Explorer, stuff like that. So, so uh, at least in the context of edge delivery services, um, we, we are by default uh, instrumenting all edge delivery sites with RUM data, which is a little framework by edge delivery services that can report core web vitals as well as any other instrumented checkpoints, browser independently, anonymized, and performant. And the good thing is, is that RUM is not only available for edge delivery sites, you can, you, you can theoretically use this RUM framework for any other website out there. So if you're interested in that, get in touch with us. All right, now, now we know a little bit more about performance. Let's talk about insight. So insight is equally as, as important as performance because businesses are investing millions to build their experiences and they have a right and a need to understand how their investments are doing, right? How are users experiencing their, uh, those, uh, how are users experiencing what we built? How are they engaging with it? How successful are conversions? Uh, how do I place ads to boost, uh, to boost conversions even more? And of course, in the end, make dollars. Right? So, so that's why, why we need to collect data uh, for the business users, for the marketers, um, so that they can make data-driven decisions on how to adapt and evolve the, the experiences they offer with um, the, the aim, of course, to increase conversions and revenue ever more. So this is kind of categorized a little bit in, into major uh, inside industry platforms, such as you know analytics, uh, using, tracking user behavior, consent management platforms, which are kind of trackers by themselves, uh, experimentation, personalization, and so on. So all of them kind of boil down to using similar techniques in that something on the client needs to be instrumented. Um, one of the more primitive approaches, but very effective approaches, is using pixel or web pixel tags or web beacons. So one by one pixel images that are easy to integrate in websites do not have a lot of the security concerns that other techniques might have, and tracking data can be transmitted to the collector edge um, via URL parameters and, and headers, so to speak. But the first class citizen is JavaScript tags because they offer a lot more power and flexibility. You can basically do anything with them that is supported on the client side. So you can um, 
react to, you can li add listeners to events, you can track clicks, page views, scrolls, uh, or any custom events that, that, that are available on that site. But you can also do uh, DOM manipulation, document object model manipulation, uh, injecting ads, linking social media, um, all these kind of things. Um, so those are the first class citizens, and all of those need to eventually uh, talk to a third party collector edge, either to get ads or to report data back um, and, and therefore provide all of this data to the marketers that will process and report to the business users on this data. So as the, given the breadth of the inside industry, um, it is no surprise that uh, there is a lot of platforms that have been created on making the management of such tags easier. And when I say easier, specifically easier for marketers, because they want to be able to control what is collected, um, what is injected, which ads are being placed, what social media platforms are being linked. And that's why we have stuff like tag managers, experimentation platforms, personalization platforms, forms and CMPs. And what it all amounts to is that somebody that is not uh, part of the website development team is in full control of a huge array of JavaScript tags. And all you get as a website developer is a little innocent URL that you put in the head of your website. And then the Trojan horse arrives in your castle. And you get a, a vast amount of third party code injected without any control by you. Um, into the page rendering flow. And this causes massive and costly operations that can kill your, your Lighthouse score in, in a millisecond, so to speak. So, so that's a little bit the situation that we have. And just to illustrate this a little bit, um, let's look at a footprint of a well-known website um, where you can see that um, the, the, the first party requests that pertain to the actual content that you see as the consumer on the page is in the green area. So very small, not a lot of requests. And all the rest uh, are third party requests generated by the mere um, integration and injection by tag managers, consent management platforms, and ad platforms. So it's a massive footprint that is uh, more or less invisible to us. And this is not a singular occurrence. Uh, if you consult the web almanac, then um, you can read that the top 1 million sites globally um, use up to 25 third parties. 45% of traffic globally, of requests globally, are third party. And of those requests, 34% are script requests with all the associated chain of potentially additional resources loaded and request chains initiated. So yeah, Ekrem, why don't you explain to myself a little bit what the problem is with that? So um, this uh, request map shows uh, how many requests made from third parties as well as first parties, <clears throat> and the, 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 the data downloaded, the size of the data downloaded from by both first parties and third parties. Now, it is, you don't have to be a record scientist to understand that their third parties are using, as well as first parties, uh, very precious resources. And what are those? Bandwidth and, and CPU. So in, in, the, in this scenario, uh, no matter where you render your content from your in, in, in service side or client side, if you download and execute that many lines of code, uh, your, your your performance is going to suffer, right? It's no it's no brainer. But um, it's not just crude numbers. It's not just lines of code that you download for, uh, from from third parties or execute them. There's also some little techniques that uh, third parties uh, use, uh, which also affect your performance in a bad way. Um, most of the times, if you, if you put that little snippet from your tag manager to your website, um, it, 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 it also generates, it injects other scripts to your website. What are those? Um, those are other third parties, generally uh, used by marketers, sales guys, ad guys, um, to, to do their business. Um, those scripts, they inject themselves uh, at the top of the head, they prepend themselves to head so that uh, they get some kind of a fast track in the browser's download queue um, to, be, to be downloaded earlier. Um, that the kind of 
creates a problem that your actual content in your website can be delayed, right? In 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 the first phase of of first phase of the of the, of the website loading, uh, you download third parties, and then your your actual content is going to be delayed. So um, users uh, they see a blank page while the page is loading, and 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 then your actual content arrives later on. So they alter the load sequence of resources, and they consume your precious bandwidth. Also, um, they, like I said, they download, like if, if, if you clicked on one of those third-party minified JavaScript files, you'll see a lot of content. It, 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 it's a huge uh, JavaScript file, which, which, which uh, takes a lot of burden on, on, on CPU. And then they also do DOM manipulations and etc., which can alter the if you alter the, the, the HTML, right? Um, if, if, if you, you all see uh, pages, content changing, loading ads, uh, loading other stuff by third parties, which, which alters the, the DOM. This is especially bad in, in mobile devices where they connect to internet using 3Gs, 4Gs with, with very limited resources, very limited bandwidth and very limited CPU, uh, it, your, your page performance suffers a lot compared to regular desktop devices connect to internet via Wi-Fi. So um, the impact are measured, like, like DJ said, uh, on the lab uh, by, by metrics uh, created by Google. Uh, these are uh, already available on the internet. You can, you can look them up. Um, third parties. Uh, majorly affect, majorly introduce total blocking time in your website. That means uh, they block the main thread uh, heavily, and then your, 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 your actual user interaction uh, suffers from that. And then uh, depending on how much bandwidth they use, depending on how much resource they hog, um, the, the actual uh, content uh, arrives later, so your SCP is delayed as well, and they can also um, cause cumulative layout shift. Which, which, which changes your, your content. And then um, <clears throat> this is also m measured uh, from actual field reports. Uh, like DJ said, RAM data collects uh, the actual user experience, whereas the, the lab data uh, is uh, kind of like a synthetic. It just measures the, the first part of, 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 of page loading. The, the, the field data comes from uh, the actual user experience. Um, we are relying on RAM data for that in, in edge delivery services. Uh, there is also Chrome user experience data that you can, you can find on, on the internet. We will talk about some mitigation. So we, we, we know the problem. We know what impact third parties cause and, 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 and what, how, how to measure those impact, right? Now let's talk about some mitigations. Um, the most I, I can say primitive way, like the, the easiest way, is to delay them, right? First, load your actual content, and then delay uh, loading of third parties later on. This is uh, working. It, 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 it will make your page appear faster, but it might not change the actual user behavior later on. What I mean by later on, if, if, if for example, you have a third party uh, hogging CPUs when, when, for example, if they track link clicks every time, uh, you, can, you, can, you can see that your, your, your web page performance decreases when you interact with the page. Um, the, 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 you, can, you can solve it by vaporizing the, the third party content. Uh, that is a possible mitigation, uh, but, but it's not always the case. It's not always uh, applicable for, for all third parties. And then there's this other mitigation uh, called eager queuing lazy loading, uh, which uh, when you delay the third parties, you actually miss some interactions. Uh, if you want to collect the, the data, if you want to track your users early on, uh, when you delay your third parties, you actually miss those interactions, which could be very important for the business requirements. Um, but if you, if, you, if you eager queue and then lazy load your third parties, then you will be able to collect those um, those early on interactions as well. So we created a little bit, little demo for you uh, to, to show how to do these optimizations, 
how to delay, how to vaporize, how to uh, eager queue lazy load. Um, in this demo, uh, we have a little mise en scene. Uh, we have this uh, Acme Analytics tracker uh, we created, uh, which collects uh, data uh, when when user clicks on links, and and and, and that will of course cause some performance impact. And we will talk about possible mitigations. All right. So we have this uh, very crude uh, edge delivery service project uh, created from Boilerplate. Um, it is uh, a very basic website which has uh, uh, some content and also has a CTA here. So the, the, the way it works is that if I refresh it, so when you click on CTA, it shows how many times it clicks. So one day, a marketing guy says, uh, we are investing millions of dollars on this uh, targeted ad campaigns, and we have to track how, how much bang we are getting for our buck. And uh, he says that there is this uh, library of that third party that we need to inject our website, uh, which will collect data, uh, how much return we are getting, we are getting for our invest investment. So um, you go to the documentation of the, of the third party, and then and, and there's this little, it, it's very easy. You, you see one liner snippet that you can put in your HTML, and you're done with it, right? Let's do that. So um, this is our code base. Um, I will do that on, on, on an edge delivery services project. So um, let's, uh, let's add the tracker to the old lazy. So it's this. this is a utility function from Lib Franklin. Uh, what it does is it, it, it injects the, the JavaScript file to the head of your document. It's just a one-liner change. I can create a branch. Let's push it. Let's create a pull request. So um, in the background, the PSI uh, lighthouse score is, is being calculated. Meanwhile, I can I can check the real page if 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 everything works fine. So let's see. All right, live, no, because I'm on this branch. And yeah. Acme Tracker is, is loaded. Now I can click. I expect Acme Tracker to collect the data every time I click, right? Um, it works. I think we are done. Um, let's check what happened. There is some performance degradation caused by third party. It introduced some TBT, which is decreasing the overall performance. Um, so um, according to the mitigations we mentioned in the previous slide, um, what do you think we can do? I have no clue. I'm a little bit hopeless. Yeah. Let's check the documentation. <laughs> so, <laughs> what? You don't read documentation? <laughs> Let's check it. Keep it at 100 with performance. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Too much stuff. So it mentions three-phase loading, eager, lazy, and delayed. And here, if you can read it, it says in the delayed phase, something, something, and think of marketing tooling, etc., and delayed JS. So um, it says that if I move my marketing stack to delayed JS, it will somehow be um, better. So let's do that. Yeah. 
So let's move it to delay.js. So the change here is that I, I, I removed it here from load lazy function, right? Um, that, that one liner removed from this part and it went to the delayed JS. So delayed JS is loaded by, yeah, for a couple of seconds delay. And um, I'm hoping that this will, let's say delayed. Right. Yeah, just as a side note, um, all of these mitigations are of course applicable to any website that you're built. We're just showing this in the context of edge delivery services. So keep that in mind. All right, my, my change went in while it is calculating the Lighthouse score. Um, let me see if it still works. Hard refresh. I'll check the network. All right. Okay, delayed kicked in, and then tracker is loaded, right, with some, of course, delay. And tracker is loaded. And yeah, when I click on it, the data is being collected. All right, performance is back to 100, and TBT is totally gone. Um, it's just delaying. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hold it. Oh, thank you very much. All right. Yeah, but we are losing some precious data early on when, until the delay kicked in, uh, user can interact with the, with, the, with the page. That is being lost. Let's see. Um, if I click this, nothing happens, right? I click, okay, load it, and then data collected. So it collect only three times, but I clicked on, on, the, on the CTA 15 times. So um, let's do another performance check uh, here. Let's click some more. Let's see how it behaves on field, not on the lab, remember? So profiler, I see a lot of TBT introduced actually by, by this tracker. When I, when I look into profiler, I see that this process track event coming from tracker is actually hogging CPU. So it, it, it blocks the main thread. Uh, meanwhile, when I click on this, I don't know if you notice, but the, 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 the text changes with a delay. So that is uh, first input delay. Uh, it, it, it affects user, user experience. Uh, nobody wants to wait until they interact with the page, right? So um, what can we do about it? If I, if I scroll down a little bit, it, it mentions that ideally TBT problems are removed from scripts in question, either by loading them outside of the main thread in a web worker or just removing them. All right, let's try web workerizing it. So um, how do I web workerize it? Well, you need third-party dependencies. <laughs> All right. So another third party, there is this nifty little library called Party Town, which helps you uh, load stuff in, 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 in web workers. So um, I already read the documentation, um, so I know how to apply it, so I will give it a go. Let's try to web workerize the tracker. So um, to use Party Town, you have to uh, add their uh, scripts to your project. Uh, in, in Edge Delivery Services, you can just copy and paste them to your scripts folder like this. And um, in your scripts file, by the way, I, I removed it from delayed. So there is no uh, tracker in delayed anymore. So if I go to my scripts.js file um, in my load lazy function, uh, I, I, I load the script, this time with the type text party town, and I initialize party town like this. It just point to the, to the folder, and then I import them lazily. So um, that's simple. Let's uh, tracker integration, web workerized. All right, let's see. Right, it's web workerized right now. While it's being calculated, Lighthouse score being calculated, let's give it another hard refresh. This time, let's click on it. 
and it's being collected. And if I do a quick profiler here, I still see some TBT, but it's not in main thread, right? It's uh, in the web worker. So we just offload the TBT part to web worker. Now, it seems like a silver bullet, but uh, uh, HTTP requests made from web worker are bound to fetch API, which means they're bound to course, uh, course uh, course rules uh, imposed, by, imposed by the browser, right? So um, if, if the third party, they don't, uh, they don't return, uh, they don't respond with, with, with the correct headers, correct course headers, then you're not basically able to uh, lo use third party scripts in, in web workers. That's a huge limitation. And according to Web Almanac, there's only a handful of, there's only a few, like less than 100, uh, websites using Python on production, it, it's still uh, getting some traction, but it's not there. So um, if you if you try to web worker everything, you might not achieve that, right? Um, it's also a bit fragile setup if you if you are injecting your third parties by tag managers. Um, something that can be added by marketers can break the entire setup. So you have to always uh, keep track of it. And the, the third, but I don't have much time for it. Uh, mitigation was eager queuing, lazy loading. In that case, um, if you have um, a third party that, is, that supports queuing, you can initialize the queue first so that you can capture all the, all the precious interactions. And then later on, uh, you, can load your, um, you can load your third party to avoid the unwanted uh, effects. I will quickly go back to my presentation. So um, other mitigations uh, are available as well. There is something called server-side tagging. If you are using a tag manager, uh, you can actually move your tagging from client-side to server-side, but that is pricey. Uh, available from major tag managers like Adobe Launch uh, or Google Tag Manager, uh, there is also another uh, possibility to do uh, discover. Um, if, you, if you noticed, um, we use the word mitigations, not solutions, uh, because these are mitigations. So you have the TBT, you are either uh, delaying it, uh, offloading it, or, 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 or sending it to server. But migrating outdated third parties are, is the actual solution for it. If, for example, if you are using Adobe Analytics, um, use it use with, with Web SDK. Um, there, is a, there is a PR created by our, one of our colleagues uh, which the, 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 the link is, is in, the, in, in the slide, um, shows how to do that with edge delivery services, right? Um, it is, it is, it is a, a very, very uh, performant solution, and it works very well. So the solution only exists on the third-party side. And the last, uh, you can minimize or eliminate MarTech. Uh, you, can, you can talk with the, with the marketers. You can, you can always keep track of it. And get rid of the get rid of the side effects. Yeah, I think we're a little bit out of time, so maybe go to the questions. All we would have done is have a little call out for you guys because um, take web performance seriously and start with optimizing your sites without Martech first. So once you are at a solid hundred, um, then at the Martech stack, assess the performance impact it has, and then iteratively apply mitigations as needed, and then don't stop. Continuously monitor the uh, performance of, your, of the experiences you build at all stages and continuously. It is a mindset. So thank you. <coughs> Hit it. I hit it, yeah, sure. Roy would like to know, so how should we load Adobe Launch or Adobe Web SDK for the best performance? Adobe Web SDK is already performant, so um, it doesn't take any toll on, 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 on performance. You can, you can load it. Um, there, is this, uh, there is this hidden slide in the deck, uh, a reference implementation, like I said, made by one of our colleagues. We can refer to that. 
do you think it's uh, worthwhile try to educate marketing and business departments about the impact of their, for example, tag managers mm -hmm. uh, to the Lighthouse core and their user experience? And do you have experience in that? We tried that. It doesn't happen. It's absolutely necessary. Uh, it's staggering, uh, the lack of knowledge there. Um, you know, it's just fire and forget, basically. And we're learning how to do this uh, in-house right now. Okay? So we'll keep you posted. While working one of our customers, uh, there was this one tag manager container created in 2012, and it was in, uh, if I remember correctly, the 300th version. And uh, the first people who created the, 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 the container already left the company or, or became senior managers, but the, the, the tags they created, they were in the, in the container. So we had to do a bit of uh, house cleaning first. To, to get rid of all those unused uh, tags. Then, uh, does Adobe also plan to optimize the AEM author interface in this way, so the content author should also have the same experience? This is not our department, but <laughs> yes. Yes, I wish for the authors that we will do that. All right, thank you. Great to have you on stage.